Hello, grade 10. Welcome to our next video, to our second video for lesson number two. In this video, we will be talking about still earthquakes. No? Um, we are not yet done about talking about earthquakes, and you learned that earthquakes are caused by seismic waves, and seismic waves come in different types or different kinds. Right now, one of the most important things that you have to learn about earthquakes is locating the epicenters. No? Now, the epicenter um, usually... Pag narakikinig kayo ng balita or nagtitingin kayo sa, sa Facebook, sa mga legit or legitimate na pages, you will see, ang nire-report nila is, where is the epicenter? Where is the epicenter of the earthquake? Saan nangyari? So, sa, pag sinabi natin epicenter, it is just the area on the ground, doon sa, sa ibabaw na lupa, na kung saan, yung ilalim doon, yung tapat doon sa ilalim, doon nagsimula yung seismic wave. So, for example, uh, this one, halimbawa, ito yung ground. So dito nagka, mayroong fault line dyan. And at dito nagsimula. Dito nagsimula yung earthquake. Tapos nandito tayo sa ibabaw. So yung dito nagsimula yung breakage ng lupa or ng bato. So magpo-produce po yan ng seismic waves. At yung area sa kapat mismo nito, this one is called the focus or the origin of the earthquake. The focus or the origin. Yun yung nasa ilalim ng lupa. At yung nasa tapat niya, this is what we call the epicenter. That's the epicenter of the earthquake. Now, here in this news, nagkaroon po ng earthquake update noong August 18, 2020 at around 5.30 a.m. sa Manila, Philippines, nagkaroon po ng 6.4 na magnitude na dindol. So, here's the epicenter. Nasa Visayan area po yung epicenter. So, uh, paano ba nalolocate ng mga seismologists? They are the scientists that are... Studying earthquakes, no? So, paano ba nila nalolocate yung um, epicenter ng isang dindol? So, they use the process called the, the, the triangulation method, no? In a triangulation method, meron pong, uh, from the name itself, no? Tri, tri pertains to number three. So, in this method, you need three seismic stations. You only need three seismic stations. For us, for them to locate or for you to locate the epicenter of an earthquake. So, paano po ba yan? We will not delve deeper on the process. Uh, but if you read your um your your module, meron po dun, no? Um, here there's an activity here that will ask you to locate the or define the center or the epicenter using three data or using data from three um seismic stations. So, ano po ba yung kinukuha dyan? Um, for example, there's an earthquake, tapos nagkaroon, uh, nagkaroon ng earthquake, and then yung seismic station, remember seismic station, sila po yung nagre-record ng seismic waves, no? So sa Batangas, yung seismic station doon, nakita nila, remember that P wave, P waves are faster than the S waves. So there's a time difference, so yung unang darating sa kanila, lagi is the P wave, so this is the first waves that will reach them. And then the second wave na darating sa kanila is the S waves. So there is a time difference. No? Pag dumating yung P wave, mag-aantay lang sila ng konting saglit, and then darating na yung S wave. So ito po yung time difference na yun. So in Batangas area, yung seismic station doon, there is a 35.2 difference, second difference between the P wave, the arrival of P waves and S wave. Ibig sabihin, uh, in Batangas, nung unang dumating yung P wave, or yung P waves, and then after 35.2 seconds, dumating na si S waves. Okay? So, ganun din po yung sa Puerto Princesa. Dito naman, 41.6 seconds. And then sa Davao, 27.2 seconds. Ang time difference ni P wave and the S wave. And then there's a computation there. You, the, they will compute it para malaman nila kung gano'ng kalayo sila, kung gano'ng sila kalayo from the epicenter. So, using this formula, Okay, so distance is equal to time difference. So it's just like distance is equal to time difference. For example, sa Batagas, 35.2 seconds uh, divided by 8 seconds times 100 kilometers. No? They will know the distance of the epicenter from the station. If we compute, so if we compute for this, the distance, okay, from the Batangas, no epicenter, yung distance ng epicenter, do sa Batangas station, if we compute for this, you will get 440, 440 kilometers. So, ganun din po sa Puerto Princesa, ganun din po yung sa Davao. The same formula ang gagamitin. And then, they will 
do this. Okay, so from Batangas Station, they will measure like 440. That will be the radius or yung gilayo, no? Kahit saang direction, 440 kilometers. And then they will create a circle like this. A circle like that. And then yung sa Palawan, kung gaano kalayo yung epicenter. And then they will create this circle. And then ganun din yung sa Davao, kung gaano kalayo yung epicenter sa seismic station. And then they will create a center. And then kung saan po magtatagpo or magi intersect yung three circles na yan, like here, dito sila magtagpo, there is the epicenter of the earthquake. So, nasa mas bate po, around mas bate, yung epicenter ng earthquake. So, that is the triangulation method. You can use two seismic stations because there will be two intersections. No? You can uh, really identify kung alin dyan, alin dyan sa dalawang yan, yung epicenter. Pwedeng sa Sambales, pwedeng sa mas bate. That's why you need three circles so that there will only be one intersection. So, ng three circles. Yung one intersection ng three circles na yun, that will be the epicenter of the earthquake based on uh, the distance or the time difference and the distance of the station from the epicenter. So, if you want to if you want to know more about this, you can visit this website no, on YouTube so that you'll know how to really um, compute and locate the epicenter of an earthquake using the triangulation method.